Hello, how you doing, Mike Bradley? Hope you're doing well as always. It's Wednesday, so I thought I would do the first Q&A video of the year. Happy New Year. Uh, I think I said it already in the previous video, which hopefully you've seen by now, which went up on Friday, where I'm teaching my brother, uh, Andy Bradley. And um, yeah, we thought it would be cool to kind of show you, you know, and also for him to kind of keep a record of himself. Uh, of how he's progressing so you can see he can see and everything like that you can see how I'm kind of teaching of course I'm kind of you now it's my brother so it's not quite as uh, uh, I suppose formal as I do it but then again I'm sure you know me by now I'm not really a formal suit kind of guy I like to have fun with everything you know so uh, because that's what we're all about it should be a chore to do anything in life really but especially when it comes to guitar but anyway so uh, you've been sending me a load of questions uh, if you're new to this, um, every week, well I say every Wednesday, most Wednesdays, a new video uh, where I am answering, answering a load of questions from you. So um, I've got quite a few loaded up. I'm going to try and bash through a few today and let's see how we get on. So first question. Sam Anderson asks, Hey Mike, I have been playing guitar for a while now and often forget some of the things I have learnt. And I was wondering if you have any tips on how to remember everything you play. Good question, Sam. Um, yes, the old memory vault. <laughs> I'm trying to remember how to uh, you know, play songs or scales and stuff like that. And I think the best thing to do is just repetition. You know, uh, we all have our thoughts in remembering things. I, you know, I've got a fairly good memory. Um, but I've got, well, I've got a good short-term memory, my long-term iffy, you know, when it comes to kind of music-related stuff. Um, so I would just say, yeah, repetition. If you're learning a specific song or a certain piece of theory, just go over and over and over and over it. Um, it's all muscle memory, be it brain or with your hands. Um, so yeah, repetition, go over and over and over and you're gonna probably drive you know, the people you live with mad, uh, and maybe yourself, um, but it'll be worth it. So yeah, repetition, mate, there's no, there's no easy way out of it. Just gotta keep going over it all the time. Paul Alexander asks, is that your real name? Hello, Mike, what are the CDs in the rack behind you? What's your top five albums, five for the guitar playing on them, and five for, well, just being you like them? So maybe that's your top 10 albums. Anywho, cheers. The CDs in this rack are a load of CDs. This isn't even half of my collection. Um, oh, I can't bother to move the camera now, but I've got CDs there, I've got CDs there, I've got a CD rack there. So yeah, two racks, one rack, one rack, load of CDs up on the shelf, load of CDs in my car, load of CDs at my mum's, load of CDs at mine. I've got, like, I'm a music lover, you all right? But uh, just some of the collection here, so you get an idea, I've got uh, the White Stripes, Elephant, you know, the kind of big breakthrough album of theirs. And then underneath that, I've got um, David, Lee, David Lee Roth's Eat Em and Smile. <laughs> uh, let's randomly go down here, what we've got here. Red Up Chili Peppers, uh, Blood Sugar Sets Magic, awesome album. Oh, underneath that, we've got uh, Working Class Hero, a lot of dust on it, John Lennon, uh, kind of best of album there. Oh, and then I, I tell you, it's just hit after hit. Uh, underneath that is Jeff Buckley's Grace. Uh, then underneath that, I've got Bon Jovi's New Jersey album, which uh, I remember an old, uh, oh, the sticker came off there. An old flame actually gave me this, so there you go. You got Who underneath that. We've got a Nirvana, a best of Nirvana. I remember getting that because it's got You Know You're Right on it, which is an awesome song, the kind of unreleased song of his. Uh, we got another, what's that? Oh, it's Chili Peppers Greatest Hits, we got. And then we got Led Zeppelin 3, Led Ze oh. My first Richie Kotzen album I got. This is the album that made me really get in, oh man, I'm out of dust on it. I haven't listened to it for a while. But uh, Get Up, Richie Kotzen, awesome album. Um, he's got the Cornford MK50 in this one, actually. Um, but this is my first Richie Kotzen album, which I would have got, I think, in like 2004. I've got loads of stuff, man. Uh, first rays uh, of the new was it? First rays of the new rising sun. Jimi Hendrix. Um, yeah, I could go on and on. I've got quite no Michael Jackson's there. Um, a couple of Michael Jacksons actually. What's this one? Prince. Then of course on top of the rack I've got a John Mayer box set with you no know, Continuum and Ring for Squares and whatever the first album was. 
uh, Blues Breakers album, Bon Jovi's Have a Nice Day, Slash's albums, Beatles Anthology, Fleet of Mac, Best Of, Michael Jackson, This Is It. Yeah, I've got a lot. I like music, man. Uh, and my top five albums. Um, okay, top five albums. Jesus. Um, well, I tell you what, what's the story Morning Glory, as I've just saw that, because that's kind of what kind of got me into guitar early oasis so i'm gonna put that in there i will put michael jackson's bad i remember loving that when i was younger thrill is awesome but you know i will put um duh, 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 uh, oh god this is really hard i'll throw a queen album in there i just saw that as well uh oh Nirvana, my first album i ever bought there you go nirvana's unplugged and uh, something guitar-y. Uh, the Richie Cotson Get Up, because that really um, that really inspired me as a guitar player, hearing that, you know, breaking away from just pentatonic. So um, I've forgotten what I just said now. Nirvana Unplugged, um, Richie Cotson's Get Up, What's the Story, Morning Glory, Bad, and what else did I say? Oh, a Queen album, I think. But I can go, I said some Led Zeppelin, you know. Um, I could go on. Bon Jovi, New Jersey. That's an awesome album. Bon Jovi's New Jersey album. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Hopefully that's given you an insight into what is in the CD rack. Michael Gifford asks, Is that the Bam McFly's book? For your next question video, do you have any books that you feel are must-reads for guitar players? Uh, you're referring to a video I did back at my flat, and yes, you, that would have been a McFly autobiography. <laughs> I got given, I don't know, a Christmas ago, or I don't know what, however many Christmases ago. Um, books I, I recently got, and I need to actually sit down and, and go through it. I got a Tommy Tedesco uh, guitar book uh, for my birthday back in August, and I really need to sit down and, and go through it. I wanted to kind of get my sight reading going. Um, but Tommy Tedesco is a session legend uh, from the 50s and 60s. He was in the Wrecking Crew, the famous session band, which was oh, nearly every song from the 60s, you know, Beach Boys to Aretha Franklin to everyone, you know. Uh, he was an awesome guitar player, Tommy Tedesco. Um, so that, that's, that's quite an intense book. I've had a read through it. I haven't actually gone through it, but it's very intense. Um, I mean, I like a lot of autobiographies, um, so they're not really learning materials, but you know, Keith Richards' autobiography is awesome. Uh, I really like Eric Clapton's and Slash. Slash's uh, autobiography is really good. Um, I, I, for Christmas, I got um, Johnny Mars and Bruce Springsteen's autobiographies, which are, I'm, I'm currently reading Mick Fleetwood's at the moment. So yeah, these aren't really necessary learning materials, but uh, for the rock and roll life, and you now a life of musician, uh, I think those are cool books to go for, especially Keith Richards, Eric's and Slash's. Uh, and then if you really want to get your guitar playing going, check out Tommy Tedesco, I think for the modern guitar player, I think it's called or something like that. I'm not, I got an Amazon, check it out. Um, I type in Tommy Tedesco on Amazon, I'm sure it pops up. Miguel asks, what type of mic, dynamic or condenser do you use for recording? So uh, a condenser mic, I'm currently using it right now. It's just off camera. It is the SE2000. And um, my voice probably got really loud then as I lent into it, but uh, I've got it just off camera. I'm, I'm experimenting with um, different audio uh, at the moment. Uh, just trying to do better video quality. Um, so uh, yeah, at the moment I'm using a condenser mic and I'm not using the mic from the camera. And then um, for a dynamic microphone, I use the industry standard SM57. Um, I have done a, um, a video a little while back, I'll put a card thing popping up now, how to mic an amp. Um, I've learned some more stuff as time goes on, just through trial and error. The big thing is having a good interface. And before, um, for ages, I used this very, very cheap M Audio fast track interface, uh, which I would have got probably like 2009. Um, and uh, I was never really happy with the sound. And I remember thinking, well, interfaces don't do that much, but there's got to be a reason why you see some interfaces for about two grand. Um, and then I paid up, uh, st stumped up the cash and bought a Focusrite Scarlet, the red box. 
and I got that a few months ago and I've noticed a massive difference and since then I've had people like your good selves uh, messaging saying oh your audio is great you know so um, yeah it's interfaces are big things so you can have fantastic microphones but the main source is that interface so again I've learned all this just for the heart no just through trial and error um, and I think that's the best way isn't it really you know like like with guitar pedals or whatever you know like you could have you could have I don't know let's say a tube screamer and um, a full tone OCD right is your two no your two overdrive pedals and you love them and then your friend says oh I like them and they buy those and they're like oh it's shit for me but you know what I mean that it doesn't work for them because <laughs> you know they got different amps they got different fingers all these kind of things so uh, I'm going off on one here a little bit but the same thing here it's just trial and error so what works for me might not work for you and and vice versa but um, you know saying that you can't go wrong with a good 57 but make sure you get a reasonably good interface you know I would say spend about 100 pounds um, or if you're in America what's the equivalent to 100 pounds in America now hundred and twenty dollars probably if that and if you're in euros is uh, probably about 105 euros as the pound is terrible at the moment but that is a different story altogether and the last question today is from CJ and he asks hey Mike I just moved to a new town and I'm looking to get a job at one of the local guitar shops I know the answer to this question will likely depend on which shop I decide to work at but I was wondering if you have any general advice on what skills I should have or need to have for the job and if there's anything I can do to better my chances at working there. Keep the awesome videos up. I'm excited to check out your EP. Cheers, CJ. Appreciate it, mate. Um, now, I thought I'd answer this question because it's an interesting one. So, I mean, I remember when I was younger, I always wanted to work in a guitar shop and there is still that inner kid in me what wants to work in a guitar shop. Um, and uh, unfortunately, I probably never will because I don't think I could ever go back to working for someone, but that's another thing. So uh, tips I would have, um, you want to come across as a really nice person and you want to be a nice person because the way I look at things, you know, it's the same thing with YouTube, you know, if I think, okay, what videos can I do? You know, I try and do videos what I like to watch. So you've got to think of yourself, okay, when I go to a guitar shop and I've got one of the sales guys or girls, come up to me you know how do I want them to be do I want them to be really patronizing and look what I can do in the guitar and this guitar can do this or this pedal can do this and blaze it or do I want them to actually listen to what I want and my ability and what I'm after and actually give a damn that's what you want to be like you know so you want to be nice <laughs> it's, it's always nice to be a nice person isn't it um, so yeah you want to be nice and of course, having some knowledge on sales, you know, when I used to work on a market stall for my dad when I was younger, so chatting to people, talking to people, you need to have kind of good people skills. And again, that involves listening. Um, and uh, of course, an ability on the guitar, you know, um, I'm a, no, you said about want to work in a guitar shop. So I'm assuming you play the guitar, not like you're a producer. If you watch me, I'm guessing you're a guitarist. Um, so yeah, um, be a nice person. Um, listen to people. Get your kind of listening social skills up and be a good guitar player. And of course, get to know the gear. You know, have a knowledge of guitars and amplifiers and effects pedals. Because if someone comes in the shop and says, okay, here's my budget. I want to get a new amplifier and I've got a 300 pound budget. You know, you don't want to be showing them a handmade boutique camp for three grand. You know, well, this though, if you get this though, it can be, you know, because if that, again, if someone, if you went to a guitar shop and you wanted, that was your budget of 300 quid and then they try to send you a three grand boutique, you'd be like, mate, please. Uh, so, you know, you want to think, okay, here's your, your budget of 300 pound. Well, try X, Y, Z. Um, so yeah, that is my advice for you there but that's an interesting and good question mate so um i'm, I'm not sure when when did you send me that okay you sent me that in september so hopefully <laughs> hopefully this is still helping you in some way but um hopefully if it doesn't help you hopefully it'll help someone else but uh yeah good question mate all the best there you have it guys hopefully some of those questions have helped you even if you didn't ask those questions if you'd like to submit a question head over to my facebook page which is there 
and it's important to head to my Facebook because I'm doing more of the Facebook Live, which I've been talking about. So I want to do more and more of that. So uh, yeah, do check out Facebook and I'm quite sporadic with it. I don't really say, right, I'm going to go live now. Uh, though I have sometimes, but yeah, definitely uh, head over to Facebook and I'm on Instagram as well and all that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, got a question, submit over there and I'll get back to it as soon as I can. There's quite a backlog. I have a few people messaging me saying, why have you not answered my question yet? I like, I will, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I will. Um, anyway, hope you're very, very well, and um, yeah, I hope 2017 is a bloody good one for you. So um, keep playing, take care. Mike Bradley signing out. <laughs>